All right, today I'm gonna to be talking about how to create a miniature garden. So one of my favorite things to do is, is of course garden in general, but definitely creating anything in a container is one of my passions. I love to do it. It's so much fun. Every time you do one, it's unique, it's different, it's creative. Sometimes they're not successful, but a lot of times they are, and we wanna help you be successful. And creating a miniature garden, for me, is always about being able to transport myself into a new kind of, uh, of atmosphere or a different kind of world or just be able to kind of take myself out of reality for a minute. And so having a, a, a miniature garden on your desktop at work takes the stress away. It gives you the chance to kind of, like I said, visualize yourself in this little miniature world. And what I love about Miniature World is it's fun for all ages, so you can get kids involved, you can get anybody, any age involved. It's a lot of fun. It's actually very easy to do, so that's what I love about them. It's super fun, super easy to do, and there are tons of different styles. Versatility, I mean, you can do them inside, you can do them outside, you can do them in glass, you can do them in ceramic, you can do them in terracotta. You can do them in just about any kind of container, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today is how to create all of these different types of miniature gardens. They're so much fun, and they're so easy to do. And so what I wanna start with is kind of getting some ideas rolling in your head. These are just a few. I mean, I'm gonna go through a bunch of different ideas that will kind of get your wheels turning, kind of get you thinking about all the different possibilities. So basically, if you have any kind of you know, uh, you know, interior design or any kind of look inside your home or outside your home, you can match that with a miniature garden. Um, and miniature gardens are great because they're great conversation pieces. You can put it on a coffee table and all, the, you know, all your guests will come over and say, tell me about this, this is so cool. Um, but it's also great, like I mentioned, for a desk at work, for a desk at home. A lot of us are working from home and we're trying to feel like we're outside a little bit more and this is a great way, like I said, to transport yourself into a natural environment. You can do it naturally, you can do it a lot of different ways. Um, and so I'm gonna explain all of those different ways today for you. But uh, there's so many different options um, and that's kind of what I wanna roll through. So one, of course, is terrariums. Now, I'm not gonna build a terrarium today. I've built lots of terrariums in, this, uh, in, in these webinars. You can always go back and watch all of my webinars on our website. I've got my own tab, the Garden Guru tab, so check out that and you can see all of my past webinars. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's a great place to go and check out all of our past videos, and of course, fa Facebook as well, where you're watching this live right now. So uh, terrariums, they're really, really fun. They're really classy, but you can do them natural. You can use succulents, you can use uh, tropicals. You can do so many different things. I love like the closed bottle terrariums. I'll show you some of those examples here in a minute, but you can do it at closed terrarium or you can do it in an open terrarium. You know, terrariums really were started because people wanted a place for their pets. You know, so if you were having a lizard and you wanted a natural environment with real growing plants or turtles or any of those types of animals that you might keep in an aquarium, um, then a terrarium kind of came from that. Terrarium, aquarium, you can kind of see the, the thing there. Uh, now there are some specific steps to terrariums that you gotta be careful with. We have all the supplies here at the Garden Center. Charcoal is the number one. I'll talk about that here in a minute. I'll get a little bit more into that. But terrariums are a great option. So if you have an old glass bowl that you never use, or you've got some sort of glass that you wanna use to make a terrarium, it's a great option. We carry a lot of different glass pieces here as well. Um, and then we can help you pick out all the plants and make your own kind of world inside of glass that you can see all the way around. So really, really cool. Terrariums are awesome. Lots of fun. Fairy gardens, of course. Fairy gardens are so much fun. Um, I know that's kind of weird, uh, and it's probably something that you've heard a lot about in the past, but fairy gardens are still going strong. And fairy gardens, in my eyes, have expanded. It's not just fairies, right? It could be elves or gnomes or just a mythical kind of feel, usually very natural, but can be whimsical and fun as well. So there's lots of different ways you can go with this. Kids absolutely love fairy gardens. They're so much fun. Um, and I see a lot of like fairy gardens in nature, right? So that's kind of why I pulled this picture right here is so that you can see like just that little mushroom, that toadstool with a little bit of moss and a couple little ferns pop, popping out, you know, it just kind of gives you that feel. And so that's probably not really a, an actual fairy garden, but it kind of gets you into the mode and gets your wheels turning. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. Fairy gardens are awesome. So a great option. And I'm actually going to build a fairy garden today. So when we get to the end of this quick slideshow, stick with me, I'm going to actually create some of those things. And then of course in traditional setup. So traditional, you know, ideas are, you know, you think of like boxwood and white picket fences. And so that's kind of why I grabbed some of these images. Terracotta is very traditional, um, and, you know, keeping it very simple. Figurines are great, you know, a little miniature terracotta pot. You can see this like little Adirondack chair and little table in this one image. 
you know, again, an idea or a way to transport yourself into this. A traditional look is simple, classic in design, um, and very easy to kind of pull off. You don't have to think too much about it because I think in a traditional classical setup, it's pretty easy for us all to pull that off. Um, and so another great example, just a different idea. Zen, of course, miniature Zen gardens are really, really popular. Of course, Zen gardens are really popular just in our own backyards, you know, creating a Zen paradise in our backyards. But you can do it on a miniature scale too. So this is great that, you know, I always kind of bring miniature gardening to uh, people that are living in condos or apartments, have just a balcony, maybe a little yard space, but not a lot. And they want to kind of feel like they're doing a little bit more gardening and they want to add more to uh, their deck, porch, or patio. And miniature gardens are a great way and Zen is a great way to do that. Uh, it could just be as simple as a bonsai plant, you know, just a small bonsai, maybe a little Japanese maple, um, you know, maybe I'll use one of those today. Uh, so uh, there, there's a lot of great options. You can do them indoors, you can do them outdoors. Uh, it can be as simple as just putting a little white bench or a little bench underneath a bonsai tree and you've got yourself a miniature Zen garden. You can also, of course, incorporate sand, do the rake idea, you know, add some stones. There's so many different possibilities. Again, just trying to get your wheels turning, trying to get you thinking about all the different ideas. Last one is outdoor miniature gardens. So of course, there's tons of possibilities outside as well. I think a lot of us think of indoor gardening. We think of these, you know, tropical foliage. We've got these little tiny miniature plants. I'm gonna show you all of these here in a minute. Um, but there's a lot of great options outside as well. Japanese maples, little tiny conifers, little miniature boxwoods, things of mondo grass and succulents. There's a lot of sedums and succulents that can live outside year round. So if you don't have space inside, maybe you don't have enough light inside and you wanna do something like this, but maybe outdoors is your only space that you can do it. I've seen even people do it in the ground, a miniature landscape in the ground. Maybe you have a little raised bed section that you wanna do. I'm gonna build one of these today in a, in a terracotta pot so you can see just how easy and how much fun it is. And miniature gardens change over time, right? So we're always kind of constantly maybe plucking something out, maybe something didn't work. We're pruning, we're limbing up, we're doing all of these things. So I'll get into all of that as well. Uh, just again, trying to get some ideas going. Now, once you've got your ideas formulated, once you kind of know what you wanna do and the plan is in place and always do a little bit of planning and this is gonna be part of that planning, after you've kind of gone through your head and you said, this is the idea that I wanna create. I wanna create a fairy garden. I wanna create an outdoor garden or Zen. Whatever it is that you decide to do, then of course, come in and see us because we'll help you accomplish that. But you also are going to need to get some supplies together. So of course you'll need plants. So lots and lots of little miniature options these days, dwarfs, miniatures, or just small starter plants. There's a lot of great options out there. So of course you'll need plants. You'll need soil, of course. So a very good potting soil would definitely be recommended because most of these are gonna be in a container of some sort, uh, some sort of uh, a vessel that's gonna hold your soil got to have soil for your plants to grow in and then I always grab some rock rock always helps to add uh, whether you need it for drainage or whether you need it for decoration on top so we'll show you all of those as well of course you're gonna need some uh, a container so you're gonna need some sort of vessel some sort of pot to hold all of your great little miniature gardens um, those will be a great idea. Uh, Kathy, I see your comment there about some low light ideas for indoor gardening. Yes, there's a lot of options here for low light. So we'll kind of go through that um, and maybe even use some of those. Um, but uh, so, so gathering supplies, so containers, you know, any kind of container works. You can either even have a container without a hole or with a hole. I prefer ones with drainage so you don't have to worry about it. it makes it a little bit less complicated. But you have, if you have the perfect container, it doesn't have a hole in it like a terrarium. <clears throat> excuse me, then you, um, then there are steps that you can do to uh, alleviate any kind of moisture that uh, builds up at the bottom, which is why I have charcoal on my list here. Charcoal or any other amendments. Maybe you need some pumice to lighten up the soil for uh, a, a succulent garden or a cactus garden. Uh, lots and lots of different amendments out there, and sometimes they look great on top of the soil as well. Charcoal is super, super important. I'll talk about that here in just a second. And of course, tools. I didn't include gloves, but having a good pair of gloves is nice and, and handy. Keeps your hands clean, keeps you safe. A lot of people might have sensitive skin. I always bring this up because it's a good idea to wear gloves. And if you, if you have sen uh, sensitive skin or uh, rash or, or reactions to certain things, it's not a bad idea to always have a pair of gloves handy. So you can slip those on and you can do your job. Uh, and, and be clean, one, 
protect your hands a little bit and also uh, protect yourself from any kind of breakouts or any kind of issues you might have. Um, and then of course, those tools right there, you can see those little miniature tools. I'm gonna show you all of the different little tools that we carry. Um, you can use anything from a bigger tool, but you're gonna find that when you're creating these miniature gardens, having a little tool might be really, really helpful. Um, all right, so then of course, accessorize, accessorize, accessorize. Uh, that's what makes this so much fun, moss, bark, wood, even figurines. We don't sell as many of the figurines anymore, like the little fairies and the little gnomes anymore, but you can pick those up pretty much anywhere these days. Um, so of course, you know, hate to, hate to send you somewhere else, but um, you know, you can always pick those up at Amazon or even sometimes, uh, you know, use what your kids might have, like maybe an action figure. So maybe it's that kind of miniature garden, um, or maybe it's an ornament from Christmas. You know, I've got lots of fairy ornaments and gnome ornaments, so you can always use something like that and think outside the box of any kind of figurine that you might want to add to your miniature garden. But I love the moss and the bark and the wood. And you're going to see me use a lot of that today uh, because I think it adds a lot. Maybe even sand. I didn't include sand in there. There's a lot of different options. I'm going to show you a bunch of those here in just a little bit. Once you have all your accessories, guess what? You're ready to start building. And that's what I'm going to do now. So uh, we're going to create some indoor gardens. I'm going to show you a couple of examples, um, get you on full screen here so you can see everything. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple different things. So let me get, uh, we won't go into all of these plants quite yet. We'll get to that in just a second. But I want to show you a couple different options. So we started with terrariums, right? So we were looking at terrariums. And of course, terrariums are in glass. So they're usually, uh, they can be enclosed or they can be open like this. Terrariums, most important thing, there's no hole, right? There's nothing on the bottom. There's no leaking moisture out of here, which makes it a little bit tricky because what typically is gonna kill somebody's plant is overwatering or too little water. Could be low light, could be high light, could be all of the light situations as well. Fungus disease, all of those we can tackle. Watering is one issue and when you when you have an enclosed container that doesn't have a drainage hole on the bottom, that becomes your biggest nemesis. How do I tackle that? Well, charcoal is the number one thing. So there's a couple different types of charcoal. Of course, you know, all of them are going to be like a horticultural grade charcoal. You don't want to just go out and use your charcoal from your grill, of course. Uh, but you want to get a horticultural grade or horticultural use charcoal, which we carry lots of different types. We carry uh, the Espoma brand. We carry the Hoff Hoffman brand. So we've got a couple different charcoals. We've even got some smaller. Uh, there we go. I did bring that. So we've even got some smaller little, uh, this is a very, very active uh, carbon or a active um, uh, charcoal. So really, really great one. This one is designed specifically for some terrariums. Um, but having charcoal is important because it's going to disinfect the water. So when water, think of like a swamp. If you've ever been near a swamp, swamp is water and soil that's been sitting there for a long time. And you're going to get that swampy smell. And of course, you wouldn't want to drink that water, right? And neither would a plant. Now, some of those plants obviously love it because uh, there's plants growing in the swamp. But uh, most of your tropical plants aren't going to like wet feet, one, um, or they're also not going to like that water to be kind of gross and, you know, carrying mold and mildew and different types of things. So the charcoal disinfects it. And so what you want to do is you want to put a layer of charcoal. You can either do it at the bottom or you can put a layer of rock first and then put the charcoal. I think everybody kind of has different uh, opinions there on, on how that should be done. I personally like the rock and then a nice thick layer of charcoal. By thick, I mean somewhere around uh, about a quarter of an inch to half an inch, maybe as much as three, three fourths of an inch. Uh, but the best way and the reason that I like to put rock on the bottom is one, it creates a kind of a look down at the bottom. You get this nice white layer if you use like white marble. Um, so I'll put a layer of rock down on the bottom and then what it allows me to do is I can see the charcoal cover it up. So once I know the charcoal has covered up all that white marble, then I know that I've got a nice good layer. And what happens is the water is gonna pull down in the bottom here, and then as it gets sucked back up into the soil through evaporation, right? So once this kind of warms up, and you usually see that, especially on an enclosed terrarium, the water is gonna get absorbed up through the soil. It has to go through that charcoal layer and therefore it's gonna disinfect it as it kind of gets sucked back up. Disinfects it as it comes down, disinfects it as it goes back up. So charcoal, super important with terrariums. And then you can build out your layers, plant up your plants. Like I mentioned, you can do it with succulents. Uh, succulents watch your watering a little bit. Now, what happens if you overwater and you're like really worried, oh man, this thing's just, the water, I can see it sitting down at the bottom and I don't know how to do it. I've got a great trick for you. Use a turkey baster. 
turkey basters work great. You can even sometimes turn it to the side, your terrarium, put your turkey baster down in there and suck out some of that uh, moisture. I in fact have a turkey baster that I only use for my plants because once you do that once, you typically are gonna say, I'm not gonna use this to baste my turkey anymore. Um, but it's a great little tool for the garden. I use it a lot for you know getting water out of a saucer of a big plant that I have that you know maybe I overwatered and I've got a lot of water in the saucer but I can't pick it up. So I take the turkey baster, to suck out that moisture. It's a great little tip. It's a great little tool to have around uh, for your indoor plants, maybe even sometimes your outdoor plants, but it helps great for a terrarium uh, if you overwater it. Um, here's another great option of, and we have a lot of these here at the garden center of already pre-planted up terrariums. This one's awesome. It's got this cool stone base here, and then it's actually an enclosed terrarium, I hope, if I'm right. Yep, so let's see if I can get this stuck on a sticker here without breaking it. Oh, we had it taped down for your safety, right? <laughs> um, so here you can see it's an enclosed terrarium. It's just got a stone base um, and these are really nice. And this one's a succulent garden. So you can see it's got all of these different succulents, Haworthia, uh, no cactus, but really, really cool looking and a really nice elegant piece. So if you've got like a beach house or a beach look, coastal look, this would look great. But even really in any kind of look, a modern look, this would look amazing. Um, and we have a lot of these already done for you. So if you wanna come into the garden center, maybe you don't wanna create a miniature garden, you just wanna pick one up, here's a great option for you. And then I mentioned succulents. Um, I'm not gonna build a succulent garden today, I just saw this. Miniature gardens can come in a lot of different forms, right? They can be big, they can be small. I'm gonna create some fairly good size ones so you can kind of get an idea and see what I'm working on. Uh, but even this, I would consider, you know, a dish garden or a miniature garden. We've got a little, a couple little tillandsias and a succulent in, in, in there. So it creates a nice little miniature garden. And these are great gifts, but also uh, gift yourself. So we've got a lot of these. These are great options uh, for um, a miniature garden. Very easy. Don't have to build it. You can just pop it and pick it up. But if you do want to build one, we've got uh, a great collection of plants. And so let's see, I want to kind of make sure I talk. So let's talk about, before I get into that, let's talk about supplies real quick before I start building. Um, so let's start with plants because I mentioned that already. We've got a huge selection of indoor tropical succulents. We've got lots and lots of different options here. So I'm just going to hold this up, show you lots of different options. Um, earlier, I believe it was Kathy mentioned some low light um, ideas for indoor gardens. Ferns are absolutely amazing for low light. Here's, I think, a little bird's nest or crispy wave fern. So lots and lots of ferns. I love ferns. It creates that great miniature garden look. This little, um, I think this is a maidenhair. It doesn't say pixie fern, but it looks like a maidenhair fern to me. And then we've got kind of like this little asparagus fern. And of course, ivies work really, really well in low light. Don't need a lot of high light. So there's lots and lots of um, options for you, uh, Kathy, that you can use for low light plants, uh, whether it's an indoor you know, plant, house plant, um, or if it's an indoor miniature garden. Lots and lots of options for low light. Um, so let's see. And then of course succulents, you know, tons of different succulents. So maybe you got a highlight situation. You definitely are going to need succulents for something like that. And they're super easy and a lot of fun to create a miniature garden with. So we got plants. I'm going to come back to this here in a minute. Just kind of going through all my supplies. I mentioned charcoal, but pick up, uh, you know, some different kinds of things. We've got a lot of these great little ground covers. I mentioned marble. This is a crushed little marble, uh, white marble chip. Uh, so having a lot of this around is great. That's white marble. We've also got like the pea gravel. This is really nice looking. I'll probably use this today. One, it's open, but it's also just a really nice little pea gravel. It's got lots of different colors in it. So it's really, really nice. And then of course, um, we've got bonsai soil mix. Now this is great for bonsai plants to plant in, but it's also great as a ground cover. It looks really cool. See that package, if you can see, it's kind of like a brown, almost like a bark look, but really, really nice little kind of gravel mixture. I love this Western desert sand, really nice white sand that you can use. Great for the cactus and succulent garden. Really easy for, for a top grass. Zen garden, if we want to use a little rake in it to create a little design or something. Um, and then, uh, let's see, oh, I wanted to mention this. Uh, let's see if I got one open, yeah. Orchid bark, I don't know if you grow orchids, but I always have a bag of orchid bark laying around. I don't grow a ton of orchids, I have a couple, um, but I love it because it's got so much cool stuff in it. So it's, it's a lot of like barky chips, it looks like mulch really. 
So it's got multiple uses. You can use it as a top dress. It's got little pieces of moss in there. It's got little charcoal, little chunks of perlite in there. So you can see this, look at this big chunk of perlite. So you got that, you've got some charcoal in there. So this is the special orchid mix. Now, sometimes you can get just the straight bark mix, which is not a bad option too, if you're using it as a mulch exclusively, or if you're using it for orchids. Um, but orchid mix is a great option. We also carry, just go through all of it. We also carry uh, some lava rock. So a nice little red lava rock. It looks great with a cactus or succulent garden. And then we carry just bark. So this is kind of cool because they're kind of bigger chunks. So you can kind of get some of these bigger chunks of bark. Let's see if I can show you that. So that's kind of a nice one to have as well. But also, walk around in nature. That's what I did last night for this. I have a contorted filbert that I love. I love contorted filberts. I cut this branch off. Um, it's getting bigger, so contorted filbert's awesome. Great vine would work. I mean, really any vine that you cut that you know you can dry a little bit and kind of use would work great in a fairy garden for a mythical kind of look. But I love contorted filbert because it's so curly. You know, there's curly weeping willow. There's lots and lots of different options out there. But just walk around um, if you've got uh, you know. If you've got a neighbor or somebody, maybe yourself has a kind of a wooded area, walk through the wooded area. You might find some really, really cool, interesting things. Or again, just get your wheels turning and kind of get you thinking about all the different options that you have, especially if we're talking about a fairy garden um, or something a little bit more on the mythical side. Because what I found last night was this great kind of, I don't think it's driftwood, I think it's just a rotted kind of branch, but it rotted really cool, so it's got all these nooks and crannies. I don't know if I'll use this one. It was bigger. I actually just cut it in half. So it was like this big. I found this really cool side of it. So it's gonna be too big as one whole piece for me to use. So I cut it right down the middle. I got a lot of different pieces, so we'll see how this works in. But this is gonna kind of create my mythical gnome elvish land in my fairy garden. So think outside the box. Think about all the different things. Rock, you know, I mentioned rock earlier. Walk around, see if you can find some of these bigger rocks too. I mean, I went and grabbed these this morning. Uh, these are great. They have lots of different colors and variations in them, different sizes. Maybe you've got a, a couple pieces of bluestone or slate left over. These make great little pads. Like let's say you have a little Adirondack chair or a little bench. You can pop this down on the soil and just leave it nice and flat and allows you to put a little figurine on it or something so it looks like they're out sitting in the, in the sun or in the shade underneath the tree. Um, again, it's all about creating that world. Um, Let's see, so rock, lots of different options there, from small rock to big rock, bark, soils, all of those things. Let's talk about soil real quick. Number one most important thing ever is whenever you plant anything, invest in your soil because that's where the plant's gonna live the rest of its life, is in your soil, so get a good soil. And of course, we want you to get McDonald's potting soil. So we've got two different types. We've got a natural and organic, comes in a green bag. I'm, I grab the all-purpose potting soil because in my eyes, it's all purpose. Natural organic's great. Um, I love that soil and I use it exclusively in my outdoor spaces. Um, but I grab the all purpose because inside I like the all purpose potting soil. So when I create my, my indoor fairy garden, I'm gonna use this. When I create my outdoor garden, I would typically use a natural and organic potting soil because it holds a little bit more moisture, which means it's gonna hold up a little bit better in those summer months when it gets really hot, hot right? Containers are gonna dry out faster. We've got more evaporation, we've got more wind, we've got more sun. So outdoors, everything's gonna dry out a little bit faster. With an all-purpose potting soil, inside, not gonna hold as much moisture because we don't have as much evaporation or sunlight or wind or any of those things. So plants are gonna stay wet a little bit longer inside and having something that's gonna dry out a little bit better is a good idea. And this is a great soil. Now, of course, you can get specific soils. Let's say you're doing a cactus or a succulent garden. Um, then you might want to get a cactus and succulent mix. This is black gold, Espoma makes one as well. We carry both, lots and lots of different formulations. You can make your own. We carry pumice, of course. So we've got these little bags of pumice, which one, of course, look great on the topsoil as well as a decoration, um, but also uh, great for the soil. It's gonna allow, to, uh, allow a lot of aeration, allow uh, the water to percolate through the soil very well. So great additive to your soil. Think about all the amendments, all the soils, all the different things that you need. Again, a little bit of planning goes a long way because uh, you can come in and grab everything and be a weekend warrior and accomplish your miniature garden in one weekend. So let's get building because that's what I really want to do. I really want to get started on, on making something here. So I'm going to put my gloves on and then I'm going to show you the pot that I chose. I've got my little brick here, so I'm gonna put this on an angle and attempt to do this so that you can see, let me try and 
just make sure I'm situated here. So I know you can't quite see everything from that angle, but you'll be able to see enough. Um, and we'll just kind of keep turning it and working with it as we go through it. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, this is gonna be an indoor fairy garden. So this is gonna be kind of cool. I'm gonna use some of the tropicals and the ferns. So for Kathy, this is gonna be great because I'm gonna make this kind of a low light, mossy, fern kind of mythical world, which will be a lot of fun. Um, and then we'll add some top dressings for some different looks and some, some uh, color because a lot of times it's gonna turn out green, which is I'm fine with. Uh, green, which is why I grabbed these wood pieces because that's gonna add a lot of that kind of natural color. So let's kind of start with planning this out because I really have, I'm kind of winging this a little bit as far as I've got an idea in my head, but um, you'll kind of see my planning process as I go throughout this. But here's, the one piece of bark that I got, and here's the other one that I've got that's really this big chunk. I mean, that might be too big, but it's really cool. I think I'm gonna go with this guy, just to keep it a little bit smaller, a little bit simpler, um, and this kind of still gets that cool look. I mean, I could put it on the side if I wanted to. I could put it a lot of different ways, but I think I'm gonna kind of make it look like it's where the hobbits live or the elves are maybe hiding behind it. We could put it in the center and have a little walkway coming around it. So we got a couple different ideas there. But of course I've got rocks as well, which always make that kind of woodland kind of, you know, mossy setting feel really cool. So now I've got kind of my staple. I always like to start with kind of, what's my big thing? Um, that I'm gonna put in here. A lot of times you're gonna find with these miniature plants that they're gonna be small, right? So especially when we look at like the ivies and the ferns. So, you know, these are gonna be fairly low plants. They're not gonna be really, really tall. You know, we hope to get some cascade out of the ivy. You know, the fern is gonna grow up to be a little bit bigger, but initially they're all gonna be fairly, kind of around the same height. Um, and so we want to add some height in there and you can do that with like a little miniature house. Like I mentioned, you can buy a lot of those figurines, um, you know, online or, you know, you probably even have some of them laying around. Maybe your kids do, um, or your grandkids. Um, and if you're getting the kids involved, maybe they've got an idea, but, uh, I'm going to use this piece of bark. So that's going to add my height to it. Now I might even use pieces of that contorted filbert to kind of work around and play with throughout this as well. Moss, rock, and plants. So that's kind of the short and sweet. Now, this container has a drainage hole. So I don't have to worry about charcoal or doing any kind of those steps. I can go straight in with my potting soil, which I've already poured some into my pot here. So I can start with my potting soil and just pour some of that right in there. And of course I've got, oh, I forgot to mention my tools. I'll show you the tools as we go along. That's definitely not an accessory, but that's something that you're gonna wanna plan and have. And I'll show you this tool to start with. Because this is a similar or a normal, to some, somewhat normal, um, uh, trowel. So you've always seen trowels out there, but typically trowels are gonna be a little bit bigger to really kind of really help you scoop a lot of soil. Um, but I love this one because it's a transplanter. So transplanters are great because it's a little bit skinnier and for smaller projects like this, it really helps me to kind of get in there. Now, I mentioned tools. We have lots and lots of different tools. I grabbed a couple here. So when we're working on miniature things, uh, we've got a lot of options here. This is um, a little Bergen and Ball set. It's got a little transplanter, a little trowel, and a rake. So that's a great little set right there. Super easy. And then this is my favorite, all time favorite. This is my terrarium tool set, uh, but I love it because it's extendable. And this is what I'm gonna use today for sure. We've also got, for those terrariums, we've got uh, some scissors as well as, or some pruners. So these are great for getting down into those, you know, terrariums that I was showing earlier. And these are little tweezers. So you can reach down and pick out little pieces of things that have fallen off your plants. It's na na natural, right? It's nature. All, all plants are gonna lose leaves at some point. So you got some tweezers. We've got lots and lots of different tools. Uh, you also might need a pair of pruners, which of course I've got my trusty pruners right here. Um, so those are kind of some of the tools that I've got to mention that you might need. Uh, but hand trowel is really, really helpful to kind of get your soil in there also to help kind of create some of those bigger holes if we want to. And this is a little transplanter, a little bit skinnier. A lot of transplanters like this one, you can't quite see it on camera probably, have 
measurements too. So it'll kind of give you a one, two, three, four inch depth. It's really because that's for bulbs. You know, if you're planting bulbs and you need to uh, deep to dig, it gives you a little measurement tool right on there. So that's how you can typically tell a transplanter from a trowel is there's usually a measurement right there on the shovel part of it. So got that, got some soil in here. We're going to need a little bit more. I'm almost going to probably fill this almost all the way to the level that I want. I always, whenever I fill up a container, I always want it to be pretty close to um, about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch below the lip of the pot. And if you've ever planted a container, you know why, because it helps kind of hold that moisture in uh, when you water. So when you water, if you've got your soil up really high, it tends to spill over the edge and then all the soil spills over and it creates a big mess. So give yourself a little bit of a lip. Um, if we want to create a hill, we can create a hill. Maybe we'll even do that. I'll show you kind of how to create a little kind of hill within your uh, miniature garden. You can do this in lots of different types of pots too. I picked this low bowl uh, just because it kind of helps for you to see what I'm doing. But this could be a big pot. It could be a tall pot. You can do these in a lot of different uh, containers. So we'll get that about to the level that we want it at, which I think we're pretty close. Maybe a little bit more just to get it right to the level that I want. One more big scoop. All right, there we go. And we'll need more of this later. I'm gonna open up my tools here, because I'm definitely gonna use those, and I'll show them to you because they're really, really cool. These are made by Eschert, which also make these really cool uh, enclosed terrariums, which is why they kind of created these tools. But I like them because they're versatile, right? So they've got a couple different functions. One, you can use it just as a little shovel. So perfect little shovel and voila, it extends. Why does it do this? Well, because we sell these amazing enclosed rams. This one's open. This one's closed. So this one you can actually take and just pop in the cork and close it off. It creates a little micro environment. What's really cool about this glass uh, globe here, this glass container, this glass jug, is you get the tools right with it and you get the cork right with it. So it's a great little setup to create that enclosed terrarium. Uh, these are really, really neat. But that's why these tools extend um, in case you ever want to create one of those. But you never know why you might need it to extend. But for our purposes today, because we're creating a miniature garden, we're going to keep them unextended. The rake extends as well. And that's why they create those tweezers and little clippers as well. Uh, but these are great little tools to have. So we'll keep those nice and handy as we begin to create this. Now, the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to start with is of course my big upright piece. So as I was mentioning, we gotta kinda of think about how we're gonna do this. Um, I think I'm gonna put it pretty close to the back of this container <clears throat> because I wanna really wanna create a world out in front. I could put it a little bit closer and try and create like a secret world behind. Let's say I you know, brought a walkway that kind of went behind it, but I think I'm gonna do a walkway kind of right up to it. So it's gonna be kind of like, this is a tree and it's old and it's got holes in it, it does have holes in it, um, that maybe something's living in, maybe an elf or a gnome or something. So we're gonna kind of just bury this a little bit. It's not gonna be super, super, super secure. In fact, I'm just gonna lean it against that back wall for the time being. We'll nestle that in. I'll probably use some rocks to kind of anchor that a little bit. Now, if you're ever pulling thing out of nature, like I did, what I did was last night, I power washed this down really well just in case there's any kind of bugs or anything like that, be careful with it. You could spray it with an insecticide beforehand, uh, but I've actually uh, um, uh, done that before where I've used a piece and I didn't wash it off or clean it off and it had a bunch of like gnats in it. So be careful with that. I think this one's pretty good. It looks pretty uh, dried up and decrepit, probably no termites or anything in it, but always be careful if you're pulling something out of nature just to inspect it really well. Make sure you're not bringing something in that you don't want, inviting something in that you don't want. All right. So now let's pull some more plants. I've got my ivy, so I'm definitely gonna do an ivy in here. I'm definitely gonna do a fern in here somewhere. Um, I wanna do kind of more low light plants. So we'll do this little guy, I don't know. I'm not real good on my foliage, but I think that's probably like maybe a little Diffenbachia, uh, maybe a little uh, Aglaonemia. Uh, so we've got that guy right there. And then let's see, I've got, oh. I'll grab this tray out of here. Oh, I've got this awesome little moss right here. Look at this guy. So that I definitely want to use. I'm going to try and keep this pretty much all in shades of green. I've got another fern. I've got this maidenhair fern, which is awesome. 
but I'm gonna keep it kind of all on the greens. Oh, I take that back. I've got this really cool burgundy moss as well. So I'm gonna use that as well. All right, so now I've got my plants. Get this back out of my way here. Because this is gonna be a fairy garden and it's gonna be in a uh, low light situation for you, Kathy, um, then I've got all these great low light plants, ivies and ferns and mosses. And so these are gonna work great. Um, and then all I'm gonna do is just kind of start planting them around just so I can kind of you know, get an idea of how I'm gonna do it. I, I typically like to build mine with a little bit of a um, you know, front to back. Um, now, if this is gonna sit on a coffee table, think about where it's gonna go in your home. If it's gonna sit on a coffee table and you're gonna see it 360, then you gotta keep that in mind. I'm gonna build this for your enjoyment <laughs> so that it's gonna be a front to back. And because of that, I want my lower plants in the front and then I kinda wanna stagger and build to the back. So, because I'm in the back, I'm gonna work opposite of maybe what I would typically do if I were looking at this straight on. And I'm gonna put some of my bigger plants in the back. So all we're gonna do here is just kind of squeeze this pot nice and gently, and then we'll pull that out. Lightly loosen up the root ball. We just wanna lightly kind of tease some of those. We don't wanna take a knife to it or anything. And then we're just gonna kind of nestle this in. Oh, I don't have to use, but I'm going to use my little shovel, because I do think that helps kind of create this nice little hole here that I can just drop that right down into. So let's see, I'm gonna actually pull this just a little bit more forward because I do want, when I pull this back up and get it straight, I want to anchor it with some maybe some rocks or something that kind of can help. So I do want to give some space away from that for this first plant and probably this plant as well. Um, in fact, let's do the second one real quick. Let me just fill in around that guy. And I'm just doing this really nice and loose. I'm actually leaving a little bit of the root ball above, a little bit exposed because I'll probably need to add another little layer of soil. And typically when you're digging holes, you're gonna find yourself moving soil and all of a sudden you've got more soil than you thought you had in there because you're adding root balls and more soil. So um, I'm actually gonna put, I think I'm gonna do this fern in the back or this ivy, sorry. Because while this could spill over the side and add that element, I think I might want this to kind of grow up over the edge here and just kind of st start to look like it's growing in the tree. Um, or in this piece of bark. So I'm actually gonna plant it. I'll just show, I gotta remember to show you up here what I'm doing. Get these pots out of the way. Lightly tease up the root ball. And then I'm gonna put this actually right back here, right behind. Give it some soil. And there we go. And then I've got this nice little vine right here that I can pull up and attach or just kind of pretend to attach like it's growing up over this brick so or over this uh, wood piece. So that's really cool. I like that. So again, sometimes you find yourself figuring out things as you kind of go along. Now I definitely want to use these mosses, uh, maybe this burgundy moss for temporary purposes. So then I'm going to, before I kind of get too far ahead of myself, I'm gonna kind of think about where do, do I wanna create a walkway? I think I do. I always like a little walkway just to add a little something to it. Um, so something that kind of says, hey, something's living over here. Something's, something's formed this garden. Something wants to walk up to it. So I'm gonna kind of think about how do I wanna create that walkway? Where do I want it to go? Do I want it to be big and windy? I think I'm gonna create a fairly good sized walkway. So we'll kind of pretend like it's gonna go you know, around here and then up to it. So I like that. So that means that's where I don't want to put plants, right? So that's where I don't want it to add any plants as kind of this kind of serpentine walkway up to the front. So I'm gonna take this moss, this burgundy moss, we'll put this kind of in the front here. And if that trails over the side, that will be amazing. Um, and then we'll use this moss. These are actually living mosses. I'm actually gonna use some preserved moss as well, because those are really great, which is another supply that you might have to pick up. So always think about all the different things that you might need. So we've got that little moss. I know you can't quite see that. I don't want this to fall off my table. All right, so we've got my little mosses in, so that's good. And then we're gonna add some ferns. I really love this maidenhair fern, so I definitely wanna use that because it's really wispy. It's very kind of chartreuse in color. It's really nice. So let's take our, this pot, and then this path was gonna come from here, and then serpentine around. So I'm gonna have this nice open spot right about here. 
So let's put it right in there. Now maiden hair ferns can get fairly good size, so you kind of want to think about that too, but I'm okay if this gets a little bit of height on it. I'm perfectly fine with that. With these two kind of getting a little bit taller, this kind of growing over this, and then we can have another element here, and look, we can see that pathway just starting to form here, and that's gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna use this guy, because this wavy fern is absolutely amazing. Fern, or sorry, crispy wave. Looks like a bird's nest type of bird's nest fern, but it's really, really cool looking. So I'm gonna use that kind of, I think over here, because that kind of, again, kind of creates that big flow through here. So we'll kind of put that, my finger doesn't work as well as the shovel. I like the shovel better. All right, so we'll put that in there, and that looks great. So lots and lots of greens. Now this ivy actually has a little variegation. When I get done, I'll kind of put it a little bit closer so you can see it. Um, but this looks really, really good. I kind of like how it's turned out, and now, we're kind of really there. I don't think I want to put any more plants in there. I mean, I've got another fern that I could put in there, but we'll save that and see if we need it. I don't think I'm going to. Um, and now I get to accessorize, which that's the, you know, that's the fun part, right? Where we get to kind of really add all of these uh, accessories um, to this really cool fairy garden. Um, all right, so the first thing I need to do is fill in just a little bit more soil. So I'm gonna put that right in the center because I did kind of create all of these um, little mounds where all of the uh, plants were. Rake, perfect. So we can just kind of rake this around. And this kind of helps because all of my little root balls were kind of just above the grade of soil because I needed to bring the grade up of the soil up. But I don't want to go too high on this. I still want to give myself a good lip so that I can add all my different things and all my elements. So really I'm just using this to kind of make sure my root balls are covered up so that my plants are going to thrive. That's my most important thing. So there we go, just getting that around the root balls. Now at this point I could add a fertilizer. Um, typically with indoor plants, because this is gonna go into my home, um, then I, I typically won't feed because I'm changing its environment, so I don't wanna feed it right away. If I wanted to, I could add some biotone, I could add some green leaf, our fertilizer, which is great, our plant food. Um, you could also use just like a liquid food on your first watering, uh, or sorry, that's the right side. Schultz plant food is a great option. Uh, lots and lots of different options for, for feeding your plants. I won't go into all of that detail today. But typically when I'm bringing something from a greenhouse environment into my home, then I know it's going to go through an acclimation period. So I don't like to add another stress by saying, hey, grow for me right away. Uh, it's okay if these kind of sit you know, still and just kind of get acclimated for me. All right, so I think I'm good there. My next step, of course, is gonna be getting this, this kind of cool wood uh, piece to kind of make sure that it's gonna stay nice and stable. So I think probably the first thing I'm gonna do is add some rocks around it. Just a couple, I don't wanna do, I don't wanna go too heavy with the rocks. But just that right there kind of helps stabilize it a little bit. I'm gonna take and put a rock in the back here. Not even really to be visible, just to kind of keep that piece upright for me. And then I've got my little piece of ivy that's hanging on right there. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll take, I've got this really cool dark kind of black rock here that I found, which is really neat. Um, so I'm gonna put that right underneath that ivy because that'll really kind of pop up against that variegated ivy. I mean, that light color plant with a really dark rock. All right, so now we can see that. Now I've got everything nice and level. I'm good to go there. I don't need to add anything else as far as that goes. I'm gonna add, actually first, before I get moving too much farther, I'm gonna add a couple more rocks. Just where I know my path isn't gonna be. That helps kind of cover up some soil, for one. I can always add bark, which I'm gonna do as well. Um, but I wanna create that kind of area for my path to kind of come through. It's gonna come right through here and then kind of lead up to the front, a little kind of serpentine habit right through there, perfect. So now that I know where that's going, I can add just a couple other smaller rocks. Maybe there's one, let's see if I can see what that looks like. Nah, not right there. I've got one up there, so I'm good there. Maybe one over here. Let me do a bigger one over here. This lighter color, look really good. So there we go, we've got some rocks. I can always add more of those la later. 
So then probably I always like to add my path as like the last thing um, because it helps kind of with, with getting everything kind of nice and solid and your path kind of uh, allows it to be a little bit easier to work. So I'm gonna take actually this bark and I'm just gonna put a pile of it in there. I love these natural elements. Really easy to work with natural because you really can't kind of mess it up. So we're just gonna kind of place this in there and around the plants just to kind of create a top dressing and really kind of define my pathway is really what I'm kind of hoping to accomplish here. This kind of helps kind of create that path. You can see it forming right there, right through there. So we're kind of taking that pile and getting it out of the way of my path. So it's gonna come up here. It's almost gonna kiss this rock right here. So it's gonna come right close to this rock. So I don't really need that. So it's gonna come up here, go to this rock, and then it's gonna serpentine back over to here. And then you can leave this right there. All right, perfect. Now, what I'm gonna use is my river. I think I'm gonna use the river gravel. Um, because this is kind of that kind of natural kind of feel. It looks really cool. Um, I've got this really cool tool I forgot to show you, but a lot of us have funnels around the home, right? This one's different because it's a little bit of a wider open at the end. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this funnel to work my path through so that it's a little bit easier. Now I can take my shovel and scoop in a scoop at a time. I'm going to see if this works though, because I think it will. I think it'll work great. I'm going to put the funnel right down to the ground basically. I'm just going to pour in. Because I've got the funnel on the surface of the soil, it's not emptying. That allows me to kind of pick it up and empty it out just the way that I want, just the way a little gnome or fairy would do. Oh, look at that. It's like the perfect amount. Can't beat that. It's like I planned it. I didn't, but it worked out perfect. All right, so now um, that I've got my little pathway in, I can take, I'm gonna go back to the bark here and just add a couple more big chunks here and there, just to kind of, again, create that natural environment. And sometimes I like to just kind of put it in there. You can always tinker with it later. I, I want you to. I want you to kind of play with it over time and kind of keep messing with it. Um, but just kind of throwing it in there, if you try and place it, sometimes it looks like it's placed. Now that I've got this kind of set, I've got this great little path that leads right to this really cool piece of wood. I've got all these little ferns. It looks really mythical, really kind of different. I want to add one more element, which I didn't show you, but that's this preserved moss. I absolutely love this stuff. In fact, this bag has been sitting here in this room probably since I created a terrarium last year. <laughs> so it's been sitting here a while, but it's just basically preserved moss. It's just chunks of different moss. And I'm just gonna kind of tuck this again, not really thinking about it too much. Sometimes I've got a mix in here. So I've got this kind of like almost like neon green, which I don't really want in this, this look. So I need to make sure I get what I want. And you can find all these really cool chunks. This one's really neat. So we're gonna put that right along the path there. Like it's almost like growing on the rock. Perfect. And then I'm gonna use some on the back here just to kind of cover up a little bit of my work with that rock that I really put in for stability purposes. So we're just gonna put a little bit of that in back here. A little bit on the side over here. So just as like little pieces. And the nice thing about this preserved moss is it's always gonna be kind of this color. It'll fade over a long period of time, but you can always change it out if you want to. So I'm just taking little pockets. I love it up against the rock. It looks so cool on the rock side. So we're definitely gonna use some of it there. Maybe a little bit down here. Just little pieces here and there. And the nice thing is, you can always change it. You can always fix it. I don't know if it would look good hanging some of it on here. Maybe if I had some more of that natural, really, really natural kind of color. Let's see if I've got any of that laying around. There's just one little tiny piece. Maybe I can put it right in this little crack up here. Make it look like there's some moss growing through the top there. 
If I had one more piece, I would love it. I don't know that I do. Everything else is kind of that chartreuse green or that neon, but that's okay. Maybe we'll try just one of these little pieces over here, just kind of right by the door or the entrance. I think this is like a, you could take a black Sharpie or you could build yourself like a little door, but there you go. I mean, that's a fairy garden right there. Um, again, I don't have a fairy to put in it. I don't have a gnome to put in it, but I don't need one personally because something's living here. He's just not here right now, he or she. And so again, just a nice little natural world that you can create very, very easily. Didn't take very much time at all. And that just looks like it's just out there in the woods, doesn't it? So you put this on a coffee table, you've got a conversation piece for years, super easy to maintain, water it uh, every once in a while. You can get a saucer if you're growing this inside, of course. Uh, some of our containers come with saucers, but of course you can use just a regular plastic clear saucer uh, just to kind of protect your furniture, whatever you're putting it on. Uh, sometimes you can even get like an old rusty bowl or rustic bowl, um, really, really cool. So look at that all the way around. I'm gonna try and turn it all the way around for you. I love this container, hardcore container. This is a really, really nice, uh, nice strong ceramic container. You can see that little moss on the back. So it even looks pretty good from the back. That's where I stuffed that moss. That's what y'all couldn't see was me stuffing that moss. There's a rock down there to support my uh, uh, piece of wood, but really cool. So I'm gonna try and get this a little bit closer so you can really see it. I'm pretty happy with that. Sometimes I make these things and sometimes they end up in my house. <laughs> but uh, we might put this one out for sale for you guys. So really cool, super, super easy. Keep it natural, keep it light, keep it fun. Uh, you can make it whimsical with, you know, you know Adirondack chairs or little painted furniture um, and fairies. And, and you can try and get some, we, we do carry a lot of these little fairy plants with blooming plants. If you've got more light, you can add typically more color. I kept it very woodlandy, very natural with a lot of the different shades of green, green moss, bark, wood, and rock. Very simple, very easy, and I really like this. So really, really cool. All right. So now I know I'm getting long-winded as I typically do, but I am gonna attempt to knock out an outdoor garden for you. And these hopefully, this probably won't take as much time because um, it doesn't take as much kind of planning. It's a little bit more simple. Um, I'm gonna use this terracotta pot, which is nice because it's got this little pedestal on it. So you can see that. I'm gonna take my soil. Because this is outside, I don't have to worry about anything. It's got a drainage hole, you can see it. It is a big drainage hole. Um, I don't think I have anything with me, but a lot of times when I have a big drainage hole, I like to put like a coffee filter or a little piece of weed fabric over the top of it. Um, something to just kind of keep it in there, especially if I'm working inside, so I don't make a huge mess, but that's okay. I'm, a, I'm at a garden center. We'll make the mess. All right, so I've got some soil in there. I'm not gonna fill this up as much because I'm gonna use some slightly bigger plants. So that's gonna help fill it up for me. But I do wanna get a base layer in so I can start working from there. Love, absolutely love Japanese maples. Japanese maples are so cool. Of course, they haven't quite leafed out yet. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, so there's a great one. Uh, great tip, uh, add Invisalites for a glowy, magical vibe. Very, very true. So um, Invisalites are a little micro LED lights um, and you could add those. You could put, if this is an indoor garden that you wanna grow that you maybe need more light, you can add a grow light, of course. We've got lots and lots of different options. And the sky's the limit, it take me 10 hours to talk about miniature gardens in full detail. <laughs> so uh, I can talk about it for a long time. Now this one is really cool. So this is, I think it used to be, I used to call it a Makawa Yatsabusa, uh, but I think they're calling it now, let's see, uh, May Day. So this is the May Day, <clears throat> probably slightly different than Makawa Yatsabusa. Japanese maples, I don't know how many they're up to these days. I think it's like 10,000 different varieties. Let me see if I can scooch this over one way because I'm gonna have this big tree in my face the whole time. Um, but there's a ton and ton, a ton of different varieties of Japanese maples. So uh, this one is really cool because I know it's a dwarf. It only gets three by three in 10 years. So I can definitely grow in this pot for a long time. Eventually I'll probably have to move it, but every little miniature garden is always gonna need to change over time. I'm gonna go ahead and take this tag off just to get it out of our way. But this is a green leaf maple. Um, even though it's got these really kind of cool kind of burgundy tips, it changes colors throughout the year. 
absolutely love Japanese maples. They're so cool. Um, so this one I'm actually gonna plant right here. I'm gonna put this a little bit higher than I typically would anything else. So I'm gonna build this to a little bit of a mound, which means I wanna keep my edge pretty low so that it can catch that soil, but we're gonna to top dress this guy and make this really cool. This is gonna capture a little bit of that Zen look, that little Zen vibe, but really more so just kind of be something that creates an outdoor garden that I can enjoy outside. Um, so I'm gonna just lightly tease these roots a little bit just to make sure it realizes it's not in its original pot. It's still in a pot, but it's nice to kind of tease those roots up a little bit, make sure it realizes. Now I've got tons of options here. Um, I've got succulents, that trail I might use. I've got three different types. I've got the John Creech, which is just your green. I've got this little um, Ogon, which is that kind of chartreuse lime green color. And then I thought I had one more, oh yeah. And then I've got the tricolor which is really pretty. It's got these kind of looks variegated, but it's almost got little pink edges to it as well. So that's a really cool one. So if I need that, I'll use it. But because I'm working with a little bit of a smaller pot and I've put a big plant in it, I'm gonna try and keep my other elements on a little bit of a smaller scale, easier for me to work with. Um, so I do have some of these kind of what we used to call tiny treasures. Uh, this is a Dwarf Garden Japanese U, which is really cool. And so what I do a lot of times when I look at really any plant, I don't care so much about the top as much as I do about the base. Um, and so like on a Japanese maple, I'm looking to make sure my graft is really nice. This one's great. Then I look for structure. Okay, structure looks good. <clears throat> but this I can change over time and this I can shape and, and manipulate over time. Um, but you can't change this, right? It's always gonna be there. And that's kind of what I'm looking at when I grab this guy. I said, what if I wanna turn this into a tree later? So I looked inside and I said, wow, I've got all these different branches. It had a really nice spread on the top. I don't know that I'm gonna do it today, but I could go in there and limb this guy out and take a lot of the interior out and it would look like a really cool little tree. In fact, I could almost take it to just that yellow on the top. See that green and then the yellow? And it would look like this little bright kind of glowing tree. So probably won't do it today because I'm planting it today, but over time, <clears throat> maybe I will limb this guy up and create another little tree. Maybe this guy stays in here forever and the Japanese maple comes out eventually. Um, all right. So I've got this guy that I really like because I love that color. It looks great with the terracotta. Um, I've got a little holly over here. I think that's a holly. Yep, Ilex Dwarf Pagoda. So really kind of cool little holly. And then I love, absolutely love Dwarf Mondo Grass. So you'll probably see me use this. And again, when I looked at these, I went through and I found some that have bunches of little things that I know that I can split out because I want lots of little bunches of these all over the place. I also grabbed this. I don't think I'm gonna use it. I might use it. I grabbed it because it's blooming, for one, to show that you can add color. But this is a Vinca Vine. Now Vinca Vine is fairly aggressive. This is the minor, which is not as aggressive as the major. The major has a bigger leaf, much, much more aggressive. Uh, but Vinca Vine can kind of take over, whether it's the minor or the major. It's variegated and it's got blooms. So if I want a little pop of color, I might add this in there. Uh, sometimes you can do that with other plants as well. And then I did grab some ajuga, which I absolutely love because it's that burgundy color. These will bloom with those little kind of lilac purple flowers in the spring. This one's called blueberry muffin. And the reason I like it, it's in this small little pot, which is great. It's gonna make it really easy to work with. And I did grab this moss. I doubt I'll use it, uh, but this is a great looking moss that really chartreuse color. Sometimes I find that chartreuse and lime green, or that, uh, or chartreuse, which is lime green, and like yellow kind of clash a little bit. It would look great, either one would look great with terracotta, but one or the other in my eyes. So I think I'm gonna go with this guy, just cause I wanna stagger heights in there. So I'm gonna put this kind of in a weird position. I'm gonna put it kind of in the back third. If I broke this in, if I cut this into a piece of pie and I did three pieces, it's gonna be kind of in the back third a little bit. And I want a little bit higher than the edge of the pot. I know you can't quite see it yet, but when I turn this up, you'll be able to see. It's a little bit higher than the lip of the, the pot because I'm gonna create a little bit of a slope so it sits up on its own little hill there and it's kind of the specimen. If I had some little figurines, maybe I'd put a bench under here. Um, but again, kind of going on the Zen side, so maybe you know nothing is fine. We'll do some sand on the top. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take this guy out and get him placed. I'm gonna probably do this guy right up here towards the edge. I don't think I wanna do him right in front and center, at least not right in front of your, your eyes. So I think I'm gonna put it right here. So we're gonna loosen up the root ball a little bit. 
Now I will probably have to go back because I didn't grab my biotone. It's right over here. I can't quite reach it. Um, but my biotone uh, Espoma uh, starter fertilizer is awesome. That's what I would use on this because it's going to stay with the life of. It's going to stay with the plant for the life of the plant. It's awesome. Symbiotic relationship. Beneficial bacteria. They're amazing. Um, you definitely want to check that out. If you've ever never if you've never used biotone, use it. You'll be a believer. It is awesome stuff. All right. So I've got this great little conifer. Let me get it positioned the way I want it. So I kind of might want it on a little slight angle away from this tree. And then what else do I need? Um, I feel like I need another kind of major element. Oh, I did grab this other little conifer here. Now it's a little matchy matchy with the color, but um, it looks pretty good. So I might use that one, but I think I'm gonna go to that dwarf little pagoda holly. So we're gonna take this guy, because this guy doesn't get very big at all. And we'll just kind of pop that up here. Well, I'm gonna put that kind of really close to this Japanese maple. I'm gonna put it right up to the edge of it. That's where I think I like it. It's a little bit of a, of a pyramid look, which, you know, I don't know a whole lot of the rules on bonsai, but I do know that, um, that triangles and, and that kind of form is all part of, you know, bonsai and Zen, you know, it's all about shapes and, and tranquility and all that. I don't know the pure, the, the, the right terms or anything like that, but triangles kind of come into play and this kind of is going to work into that kind of realm. Um, and what I kind of see here again is a little bit of a path that I could create through here. I've got good big spaces for rock um, and all of these plants can live outside year round. So really, really easy. Now I ran out of soil. So I need to fill up my soil, so bear with me for a second. I'm going to take my bag of soil here. So same idea as before, St stage your plants, get them ready, and then we just need to fill in with some soil, bring it to the level that we want to be in, and then we can accessorize, which is, again, I love this part, the planting part, but the really fun part is really bringing it to life with all the different pieces at the end. So just adding the soil. I'm gonna try and not dump this all over my computer. So I'm being a little bit more careful than I typically am. Try to do this in a sitting position. <laughs> it's interesting. All right, so I think I've got probably enough there because as I mentioned, I want some good strong edges here. So I'm gonna use the camera, the angle there to kind of make sure I can see where I am. I'm gonna use my rake here to make sure I can get some soil over into here. Most important thing is getting that root ball. You don't want it covered, right? So we don't want to cover the top of it so much. We really want to cover around the edges. We want to make sure our roots are not exposed. There's a lot of top roots on that top of that existing root ball. We don't want to smother those. We don't want to kill those. And one common way of doing that is by adding too much soil to the top. All right, looks like I need another good scoop in there. Perfect. All right. So Zen is typically what? A little bit more on the modern side. So we're gonna keep this a little bit more on the modern side. Um, now that I've got it to level, it's kind of a good point to kind of say, okay, what else am I gonna put in the soil? And I do think I'm gonna use some of that Mondo grass because I think it's really cool. I might break up an Ajuga, but I wanna show you this because it's a really cool way of doing this. Let's see if I can turn this just a little bit that way. There we go. And then I'm gonna bring a saucer up here so I can try and contain my mess here. But this is a Mondo grass, little dwarf Mondo. Now there's regular Mondo too. Mondo gets really big. In fact, I grabbed 
a black Mondo, which I thought I might use, but it's really big and wispy. Black Mondo is really cool. This is about the same size that a regular Mondo grass would get. It's just black instead of green, but it's got a really cool habit to it. That might be something that you can use as well. But I'm gonna take this Mondo grass out. That's really rooted into the bottom of this pot. That means it's a good plant. A lot of people think root bound is bad. I think sometimes when you have a big root system, that means it's a happy plant. Now, a root, root bound plant needs to get in the ground sooner than later, but if you buy a root bound plant, it's okay. So what I'm gonna do here is just separate some of these clumps out. I've got all these little clumps and I'm just gonna take them. Mondo grass is tough. I mean, it is super tough and durable. So don't be afraid about kind of ripping it a little bit. That's quite all right. So I'm just gonna kind of get in there because these roots are really big. And just very gently, but with some good force, pull these apart. So you can see I'm almost kind of like bare rooting it, not on purpose necessarily, but just because I have to. There we go, look at that, perfect. Little tough it, and then I can just take my shovel here and I can pop these in here and there. So I think kind of what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do probably a similar idea. I'll probably do some sort of path through here um, or maybe sand is difficult, I will tell you. And sand is <coughs> kind of tricky outside too um, because it's an outdoor garden. So I might even just take some rock and just put it all over the top and then maybe rake it and see if I can get some cool lines in it. We'll see. We'll see where we end up here. But I'm gonna take this Mondo grass. I'm gonna put a little batch right here up in the front. And this is just kind of adding, again, more greenery, more texture. Mondo grass will spread a little bit, so this will start to kind of populate throughout the container, which is perfectly fine with me. And you can always rip it out if you need to. Another little batch right here. Uh -oh. Perfect. I might only just need one of these because I'm going to get some really good pieces out of here. So I'm going to put a couple on the back here. This will be a little bit faster. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but same idea as what I did there in the front. Just kind of filling it in on the back here. Popping them here and there. Don't, no real rhyme or reason to it. Just kind of filling it in with it. We've got one more nice kind of big clump. Maybe I'll put that kind of right up here, right close to the, the maple. Kind of looks like it's a little bit more established there. All right. Need a little bit more soil just to top dress and fill in. One more, I think I'm there. Okay, let me get a little bit of my mess out of the way here so that we can kind of see what we're working with. And then let's see if I can bring this. All right, so we'll spin it a little bit more. So there you go, you can see kind of all the way around, really kind of simple. I did leave a nice kind of open portion over here because I'm gonna do maybe something with rocks there. So let's start there, because I think rocks you know, keep it modern, keep it kind of a hardscape kind of feel to it. So I just want to make sure all my little roots are covered up. Good to go there. I've got all these great rocks still, so I'm just going to start kind of placing them around. I mean, definitely nice big spot there. So we'll do a rock there. Maybe one over here. Again, don't think about it too much, just kind of place it. If you got a big opening, big rock, small opening, Smaller rock. <laughs> Keep it pretty simple. Sometimes I like to nestle them right up near plants. So as I work this backside, I'll turn it around for you so you can kind of see that. Nice big spot, nice big rock. That's that hill too. Um, let's see, what else? And I think I'm kind of out of that. Now I did have that slate piece that I could have used, but I think I'm good. Do see a little spot here of soil that I need to fill in around my root ball. Keep my plants happy, keep my plants in soil. All right, so to do this next step, 
I still think you're going to be able to see, but I need to make it level. So I'm going to take it off this little riser here. All right, now I can see it a little bit more on the flatter side. I think I'm pretty happy with that. It looks good. Maybe swap a rock here because this is a little bit of a lower side. It can take that rock better. And this is a little bit of a steeper side. Plus I have one more kind of crazy idea that I think I might try. And I'm not quite sure how it's gonna turn out, but we will see. And I don't know where I'm gonna do it. So let's kinda, of, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'd like to do a little pile of sand somewhere, a little, I mean, typically in a Zen garden, I would have it kind of be a, a confined space and that would be perfect had I thought about it ahead of time. It kind of just popped in my head like I really wanna do an area that I can kind of rake a circle into or something. Um, but um, I think I might just do it in one kind of portion. I could do it just around the maple, although that's my highest point. So I think I'm gonna do it down here in this front portion. Because it's nice and low, it's where everything will settle so I know it won't wash away on me and move. So I think I'm just gonna take this area and put a nice little pile of sand in there. But first, I'm gonna do rock. Um, now, what kind of rock do I wanna use? I could use the white marble, which always looks good. Um, but white with this rock here, it's not quite the same that I want. Uh, let's see, I don't think I wanna do, I don't wanna do bark. I probably am gonna do just that river, river gravel again. I could do the bonsai soil mix, but it's more on the brown side. Let's open that up, let's just see. So I'm curious now. Let's open this up. Let's just look at this. All right, so it's very similar to, the, to this river gravel. Let's see if you can see that in there. So it's kind of kind of like a river gravel base, but it's got some gray tones to it. It's really kind of cool. I think I'm gonna use this. I opened it, I might as well use it, right? So I'm just gonna take this for ease purposes and just kind of pour it in my big open areas. And then I can kind of spread it around. I might use that funnel, but I'm gonna try to just do it this way if I can. And I don't wanna pour it into this space because I am gonna use, I might just pour a little bit over here, but I am gonna use that sand idea. I think that could be cool. Something different. And what's a, a good top dressing like this is also gonna hold your soil in place because as you can see, or as you will see once I kind of get this thing exposed, is um, that I do have some hills and some valleys here. So I've got some high points and some low points and this will all kind of keep it nice and kind of firm as it kind of compacts over time. The plants will be perfectly fine. It won't hurt the plants at all. It's designed for plants. Get a little bit over here. A little too much, that's okay. We'll smooth that out. Get it off my rock. Okay. I'm gonna do one kind of quick spin around, make sure I got everything covered. And that way you can see all this back area that I've been working on here. All right, so I'm gonna spin it and add where I see that I need to add some. So you can kind of see this cool kind of back area that I've completed. Now I'll just check this side, which I did a pretty good job actually. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna put just a little bit of rock just to kind of form my edge here. Now what I could do, which would be cool and I probably will do afterwards, I might take this slate piece outside and just see if I can break it up into little pieces and kind of create like a little wall right here for my little uh, sand area, my little sand pit. And this is where the kids would like love to get involved because this will be kind of fun and a little area that you can always work on. So I'm gonna do this on my side and then I'll turn around and show it to you just so I can see what I'm doing here. But this is the desert sand. It's a really nice kind of pure white sand. It's not like pure white. It's more of like a, just a nice sand, but it's nice and smooth. You can always add more. So put what you need in and you can always come back and add more. But that worked just about perfect there. All right, so now I'm just gonna take a little bit more of that bonsai rock. I mean, this is literally a bonsai soil. So again, thinking outside the box is a great idea because most people would use this to actually plant in. I'm using it as a top dressing. All right, let's see. Now I need 
my handy little rake. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and clean. I got one little piece of rock in there that I didn't want to get in there, so I'm gonna rake that out. Okay, now let's see if I can do this. You probably won't be able to see this on camera, but it is getting my nice lines in there. So this is an area that I can always kind of rake out, add a little design to, and it kind of adds that zen look to it. All right, so we'll spin this around so you can see my little, my little sand pit, my little area for zen. I could take, you know, if I had, I don't know if I have another little tiny rock or something, but I could take a little rock and put it in there. I've got this rock right next to it so it adds that texture. And that's kind of what we're always looking for, right? We're looking for different textures, different feels, different looks. Um, so this is really, really cool. I love the way this turned out. I'll give it one more 360. This guy over time, I can limb up. So really, really cool. This Japanese maple is going to leaf out here pretty soon. And it just creates this kind of mountain zen slash, you know, a little bit of desert look in there. Uh, it's just really, really cool. I really like the way this one turned out too. And if you hate this, you know, you don't have to do it. But if I do end up hating it, I can rake this sand in. I can scoop some of it out. I can just add rock, finish it off. Maybe I can put another little piece of mondo grass in there but this really, really turned out well. I didn't use the ajuga, that kind of would have added some color, because um, I think I probably could break this plant up. Now it looks like it's just one, one type of plant in there. So, because I've got so much small, like big features, and then I've got all these little small little mondo grass, I like the simplicity of it. And sometimes that's what Zen is, is a little simplicity. So, all right, there we go. So I've got my two miniature gardens. Um, I know I've run way over my, I'm trying to do everything in an hour, uh, but I know I went way over, but this was a lot of fun. I hope you all enjoyed this. So here's my miniature um, Zen garden. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this for you while I wrap up here, just so we can kind of see everything. Get everything pushed off to the side here. I've really had a lot of fun doing this. This is one of my favorite things. As I mentioned earlier, you know, creating anything is one thing that I love to do. I love to create new pieces. Whoa, there we go, made a mess. All right, so then I can bring this guy up. Now that you can't quite see it, let's see if I've got a riser. Where did I put my riser? I think I've lost it, there we go. It's not going to quite get up to the height, but there you go. You can see my two gardens, my fairy garden and my Zen garden. Really, really cool. I love the way this one turned out. Really easy to do. Lots and lots of fun. Be creative. Think outside the box. There's so many different options. There's so many different thoughts, so many different ideas out there. Um, so just kind of look around nature, get inspired. Hopefully this inspired you some to create your own miniature garden. Um, and I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, it's been lots and lots of fun. Uh, think outside the box, terrariums, terracotta, you know, an old wagon, an old bird bath that's cracked or something. You can do so many different things with so many different vessels, so many different containers. Come in, we've got a huge selection. We're ready uh, for any of your miniature garden needs. So we hope you see you here soon at McDonald Garden Center uh, to help, so we can help you create your own miniature garden. I hope you all enjoyed this. Stick around and I'll answer your questions now. All right, let's see if we've got any questions along the line, because I kind of really got rolling there. Went on for a long time. Hopefully I didn't babble too much, um, but I will go through and answer questions. I'm going to say thank you, Kim, for the birthday wishes. Marianne, uh, Deanne, thank you, Kim. Watching from Indiana, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's see, Kathy, everybody's saying uh, happy birthday. Thank you so much. All right. Kathy, we talked about the low light ideas. I hope that helped you out. Patricia says, I hear it's your birthday. Well, happy birthday to you. Thank you. Love the turkey baser hint. Yep, love using turkey basers. Very, very easy. Thank you, Tony, for the happy birthday wishes. All right. It looks like everybody must have, I must have given you way too much information because I don't see a lot of questions. Love it. Would love to know the tips on how to maintain the looks when they start to grow too big too tall or too long? So that's a great question. Um, so as these things get bigger, you can cut them down a little bit in size, um, you know, and you can work it down. 
So let's say something like my maidenhair fern here. You know, I, I know what maidenhair ferns, how big they get. They typically can get up into here. One, that could be cool. I could try and keep some of the lower little sprouts out and make it look like a little tree. Um, but it will always come back from the ground and it'll always kind of stay a little bit squattier, especially if we give it a little bit more light, it'll help because typically ferns are going to stretch out for light. But, you know, most of these are miniatures are going to stay pretty small for a fair amount of time. Now, um, something like this, this bird's nest fern, we know those don't get very big and they don't grow very fast. Ivy, while it's a trailer um, and a runner, you can easily keep that trim back. The mosses definitely stay low. So just kind of, you know, talk to us and say, hey, I really don't, I really want kind of a low maintenance uh, fairy garden, something that I can uh, easily maintain and not worry about it getting too big. I see it happen a lot with like our terrariums. I mean, I showed you that one example. Let's see if I can grab it here. So, you know, this terrarium, this plant's growing out the top. Some people might not like that. I could take this, cut it right down to the ground, let it regrow. Be perfectly fine from, for, for that. Uh, most of those plants are going to be able to take that. So, something like the fern um, or even the ivy, if you want to cut it back, that's basically how you're going to kind of control the size. It's just cut it back. Um, now, as I mentioned, the light might help you as well. But that's pretty much what I would do is select your plants correctly. I mean, like this outdoor garden that I made, these plants are going to grow very slow. So if it gets three by three in 10 years, and it's already what, you know, maybe what, one, one, one by one. So if it gets three by three in 10 years, then it's got another probably eight to 10 years before it gets to that full size. So you got plenty of time. And these little dwarf kind of conifers and, and, and hollies might grow somewhere between an inch to two inches a year. So very, very minimal growth. You can keep them pruned. They're designed to grow very, very small. Miniatures are different than dwarfs. So you kind of have your miniatures, dwarfs, full size, or semi-dwarfs than full size when you talk about plants in general. Um, let's see. Kathy said, thank you, good, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, let's see, what fertilizer do you use? So I almost exclusively use our green leaf. So this is our McDonald green leaf plant food. It is awesome. I use it on indoor plants, outdoor plants, pretty much everything. Indoor, be a little bit more careful. A little bit lighter is better. Um, but for indoor plants, I also love the Schultz liquid plant food. So this is just comes in a dropper. You just drop it right into a watering can, water your plants, and it gets it. I typically like a granular plant food because it's going to last a little bit longer. But something like a liquid plant food, a little bit of a quick hit is really, really good. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to feed these because I put them through a little bit of shock by planting them. Uh, what I might do with something like my indoor garden, uh, I might give it a little super thrive to just kind of kick off any kind of shock that it's going through. Love super thrive. I didn't grab any, but super thrive is an awesome one. Uh, there's organic uh, green leaf plant food as well. And you can use a lot of different types of plant foods. We carry a numerous type. I mean, we carry Osmocote to Miracle Grow to Schultz to our green leaf uh, because we'll find one that suits the best for you. My personal favorite is that green leaf because it's an all purpose. And what I love about it is we formulated it, we designed it, so we know what's in it. And it's got boron and zinc and copper and magnesium and iron and all of these great micronutrients that big fertilizers don't typically have. Big fertilizers typically have NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. This one's got all of them. So uh, really, really good one. Well, not all of them, but it's got a lot of micronutrients. So it's a really good formulation. That's what I would recommend. And then I think that might be it for the questions. Betty said, uh, wait, no, there was uh, a couple more happy birthday wishes. Loved it. Thank you, Kim. And then a Angel said, what was the name of the fertilizer that you used? It's that McDonald green leaf plant food. My favorite. Find this anywhere at any of our stores. I like to get the big 20 pound bag. It's the best deal. Trust me. And you're going to use it inside and outside. Use it on everything. You don't have to think about it. It's awesome. But you can use like a plant tone, a spoma plant tone. I mean, the list of fertilizers and plant foods that we carry here is very, very long. But we carry them because there might be specific needs. But something that I always have handy around my, my yard is green leaf plant food. Thank you, Angel. I forgot that, the Biotone, thank you. I thought you mentioned a bio fertilizer. So Biotone um, uh, starter fertilizer is made by a spoma, it comes in a blue bag. I have one right over here, I just can't re reach it. Um, but uh, Biotone starter fertilizer is awesome. What's really cool about it is it's a light fertilizer, gets the root system uh, going, but what's the most important thing is it's got beneficial bacteria and soil microbes that are going to attach themselves to the root system, forms a symbiotic relationship, takes from the plant what the plant doesn't want, 
gives back to the plant what the plant wants. So it's this great relationship and it can last for the life of the plant. Really, really great for container plants. Amazing for inside in, in the ground. Vegetables, herbs, fruits, foliage, tree, trees, shrubs, you name it, it works great on. The only thing I think it doesn't work on is pine trees. <laughs> But a conifer, like a, or this isn't really a true conifer, a yew or an ilex, it's gonna work perfectly fine for. Something like even this little, I think this is a, uh, a, a Hinoki cypress. So it would even work for this. It's just pine is like the only thing it doesn't work on, it's weird. But it is an awesome, awesome starter fertilizer. So Angel, check that out, I think you'll love it. Um, we hope to see you all here at McDonald Garden Center. We've got lots of fun things coming up. Check out our website, mcdonaldgardencenter.com. Stay tuned to our Facebook page. I've got a laundry list of webinars that are starting for our uh, spring showcase, so you're going to definitely want to check those out. I'm going to take off next week to you know, get ready for the showcase and get ready for five webinars in a, in a nine-day time frame. Um, and then I'll probably take another little bit of a break, and then we'll get rolling right into spring. So stay tuned. Check out our website. Check out our Facebook page. We'll keep you uh, in tune as to what's going on here and keep you educated and keep you growing successfully. So hope to see you here at McDonald Garden Center in the future. Everybody have a great day. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. And I will see you in about 10 days. It's coming fast. Spring will be here anytime. All right, bye. Bye, everybody.